Peter just entered their home with Wendy when they catch the therapist talking to their parents. Both Wendy and Peter swiftly hid in the shadows of the dimly lit hallway to snoop at their parents' conversation. Not too long after, they hear something about turning off the nursery. Wait, what? They're turning off the nursery? Wendy whispered. I doubt they're turning it off, Peter whispered back. But Peter saw them walk to the nursery where the fuse box is. Peter quickly ran to the hallway where it leads up to the nursery with Wendy trailing behind. But they were too late. Their parents already turned off the nursery and the only thing they could do is watch the nursery slowly turn off and the hum of the film projector slowing up down to a dead stop. No, this can't be happening, Wendy exclaimed as she broke down to the floor. You're so cruel, I wish you were dead. Peter threw insults at his father. They threw punches into the air, threw pillows, and many more. P Peter and Wendy soon realized that they could only do so much and gave in. Both of them walked slyly into the air flu as their disappointment settles in. In their room, with nothing to do, Peter devises a plan. There's an electronics shop a few blocks away, and Peter thought if he could hack into the main computer that controlled the house, he could trick his parents into going to the nursery and lock them forever. He sneaks into Wendy's room to devise the plan. Are you sure that this works? Wendy uh, talks to Peter. 90% sure. When Peter replies with confidence, Peter then grabs his jar that he's saving up for months and sneaks out of the, his house. He knew that he had only had 10 minutes before the alarms go off and alert their parents. He ran as fast as he could to meet the 10 minute time limit the alarm had. One, two, three. Peter counted as he ran. He reached the store in just under four minutes. Looking for, the part, looking for the parts took him a long time because of the products being out of stock or too obsolete for the job. He ended up getting two Arduinos and a lot of electrical wire to do the job right. He looked at the time again, 4 minutes left. He checked out without giving the cashier a high five or giving the receipt. What? Come on, give me a break, Peter added tirely said tirely. With four minutes left, Peter ran as fast as he can back to his home and arrived with only four seconds left on the clock. What took you so long? Wendy asked Peter. Wendy, the shop was a couple blocks away. I had to run f then f I had to run faster than the line in the nursery. P Peter exclaimed while taking deep breaths. Both Peter and Wendy swiftly went back to Peter's room to build the device. He plugged in the soldering iron and let it heat up. Wendy asked, So what are you going to do after mom and dad had permanently disappeared? I don't know. We could do a little picnic or wait outside until some of our friends show up. Peter replied, The soldering iron had finished up heating up and the smell of flux and molten solder starts to fill up the room. Peter is soldering the device together while Wendy devises a plan to distract her parents for tomorrow. About three minutes later, Peter finished soldering the device together and went downstairs to test it. In theory, this should work, Peter said nervously. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me you haven't done this before? Wendy said worryingly. Well, here it goes, Peter announced quietly. They sneak into the fuse box where the controls are located and started to plug in the cords to their respective connections. Peter then turned on the device. At first, Peter thought it had failed, but surprisingly not. Not long after, the progress bar shot up to 60%, then 70%. Everything was going according to plan. And by 5 minutes, Peter gained access to the main computer. What shall we change? Peter asked Wendy. We could, we should change the realism factor. They deserve all of the pain they get. 
They slept for the night and woke up a little late than usual, but it's time to commence the plan. Peter turned on the, nur the nursery and both Peter and Wendy shouted from the top of their lungs. Help us, please! Peter and Wendy shouted th three times. And then they saw their parents rushing into the nursery to see what has happened. Peter snuck up from behind and called the door to be closed forever. As Peter walked away from the nursery, he could hear the screams of his parents, but they felt no regret at all. Peter went to Wendy and comforted her. It's finally over, Wendy sighed in relief. Finally. A minute later, the therapist entered the house. Where's your mom and dad? The, ther the therapist asked. They will be down soon, Peter answered. As the screaming became quieter and quieter, the smell of freedom was near.